Ay, ayaw pa rin. Kung makatambal na sila. Ha? Good morning. Okay. Good morning, everyone. So, so this will be a one-hour session regarding the um, accounting for non-accountants. So we'll give you a overview, okay, of uh, of what we can expect in accounting. In terms of bookkeeping and recording on how uh, bookkeeping works. Sa panahon to, very, uh, this is very important, lalo na ngayon, kasi the BIR is requiring most of businesses okay, to uh, register. Okay? And isa sa mga requirements nila ang pag-maintain ng books of, uh, books of accounts. Okay? We can see that online sellers right now um, they are required by the BIR to register. Although um, they are emphasizing, hindi naman ibig sabihin kapag nag-register ka, uh, you'll be paying tax already. Okay? And I agree with this. Kasi depende pa rin naman yon sa performance ng business. And there are some leeways okay, on registration so that you can avoid tax uh, legally. Okay? Merong mga micro-business, okay, yung sa mga barangay, and then if you you are not earning uh, more than 250,000 pesos in an annual uh, basis for the whole year, ibig sabihin, uh, wala ka rin tax na babayaran. At the most, uh, you'll be paying yung 500 pesos na registration fee natin sa BIR. Okay? So our session today, okay, for, for this uh, next hour, will give us uh, a background on the requirement of bookkeeping. Okay, and uh, how basic accounting works for businesses. Kung paano, tayo, paano tinutulungan ng accounting yung business. Kasi most of the time, yung sinasabi nila, bookkeeping, it's just an parang additional work. Okay, parang mandatory lang siya para sumunod tayo sa requirements ng BIR or ng even SEC if you are a corporation para mag-submit ng mga financial statements. Although accounting were in bookkeeping at ang final product natin is the financial statements, these are very helpful okay, to businesses. Um, we will discuss later the importance of it and paano sila nagiging importante with the financial users and who are the users of the results of the recordings that we are doing in the bookkeeping and accounting. Okay. So by the way, my name is Frank, okay, Frank Batalon. I'm based in uh, Pampanga. Okay. Yeah, I have an accounting firm. Okay, and then we also have a company who's uh, doing some technology uh, support for the financial uh, financial uh, business and processes. And then also work for I also works for Luentai. It's a manufacturing company in Clark. 
Okay, just to start, overall, what is accounting really? Okay, and on a technical term, okay, it says here that it is a systematic art of recording, classifying, summarizing. In terms of money, the financial transactions of a business to be presented to users of financial information. In short, actually, this definition means ito yung pagre-record natin ng lahat ng transaction, okay, ng businesses. Either nag-invest yung owner, nakapagbenta ka, may binili ka, okay. Paano mo ito lahat um, i-record and naayusin in a way na yung report mo is maintindihan okay, ng lahat ng users, especially ng management, ng owners, ng suppliers, okay, ng banks kapag kukuha ka ng loans. Okay? So these are all very important. So ito yung brief definition ng accounting. It's an overall okay, um, process wherein we will generate reports that will be used uh, by the business. So who are the users of these reports? Yung mga binabanggit natin, kapag na-record mo na lahat ng numbers, you have uh, you have the net income. Okay? Sino ba yung mga gagamit nito? Um, we have uh, two groups. Okay? We have the internal and external users. First one are the internal users. Siyempre, first one on the list are the owners. Okay? So kailangan nila to so that they can assess kung ano by performance ng business. They can they still continue the business, okay? Or the business kailangan ba niya ng additional fund from the owners? Or do, do they need some strategy? Okay? Because most of this data from the financial information, you you can know what you can do or you can know the direction of the business on where it is going. Obviously, if you are performing net losses for a couple of years, Consecutively, you need to reassess your business. Whether to continue, okay, probably you need to change strategy. Okay, do you need to cut costs? Do you need to boost your marketing? Okay, ganito din yung gamit niya sa mga managers. Okay, this is for business decisions. Managers are usually employees. Sometimes owners can also be managers, okay, depending on the structure of the business. But managers, uh, they do the day-to-day -day monitoring of the business, okay, on where it is going. So it's very critical for them to have this, to have the financial information. And it is important for it to be timely, okay? Sometimes managers uh, have to do decisions in a matter of minutes, okay, moments for, for it to be effectively managed the business, okay? And then we also he have here, okay, the employees. So for the employees, so they'll be using the financial information to check their job security. Although this one, um, hindi siya very common practice here in the Philippines, okay? Usually mga businesses, hindi nila pinapakita sa employees yung result ng business. Okay, there are a few, probably for the publicly listed companies, okay, but not for uh, all companies. But for folks or sa ibang bansa, they are very transparent in terms of their business. And then we have the ex external users. First are the investors. Investors are like also like the owners. Well, the, the, the difference is they do, do not have a say on the decision-making. They just put up money, okay, and then just wait for the returns. So they are interested on the profitability and the valuation of the business, okay? And then we have the lenders or creditors. Usually these are the banks, okay? Siyempre, gusto nilang malaman yung financial information ng business Para malaman nila kung makakabayad ba yung business na to, particularly on the interest and also on the principal. Okay? And then we have the suppliers. Okay? Mostly ngayon yung mga businesses, 
when they buy supplies, okay, particularly yung mga main raw materials nila, kinagawa nila on credit, hindi naman sila basta-basta magpapautang. Kasi kung babalik ta rin mo, okay, let's say, halimbawa, ikaw naman yung supplier, meron kang customer, hindi ka naman basta-basta magpapautang, di ba? You want to see kung makakabayad ba sila kung bibigyan mo sila ng let's say 30 days worth of credit in the financial statement so can at least see okay the financial standing of the cost customer whether you will allow 60 days 30 days term okay or kailangan ba customers it is also very important to check okay kasi Customers are your sources of revenue, di ba? So if your customers are not doing well, you might want to assess and check for other customers to have a steady flow of your uh, revenue. And then the next item, the people, okay, or the agency who are very, very interested on your financial information, which are the tax authorities, or in the Philippines, we call them the BIR, or the Bureau of Internal Revenue. Of course, they are interested on your financial information, particularly if you are paying the correct taxes. Okay? And then the public. Um, this is particular for those uh, publicly listed companies. Okay? Or other companies who, are, who have something to do with the public, particularly the banks, mga financial institutions, okay, mga low, mga uh, banko, mga insurance companies. Okay, so these are public companies um, who are dealing mostly, mga customer nila are public. Okay, and then for the business uh, accounting uh, concepts and principles. So this uh, brief, ano lang, I just put here a few. So these are not fully exhausted and all of the uh, list of accounting concepts. So that you can understand, ano ba yung mga foundation or the reasons on the basis of accounting. Because we do not just adapt the number. There are reasons uh, behind on every time that we do the records, every time that we categorize them. That is it as this an asset? Okay. Ito ba yung pag-aari ng business? Utang ba ito ng business? And then is this the owner's equity? Or ito ba yung parte ng may are okay sa buong business so the first one is the business entity concept this one okay this is the concept wherein sinasabi ng accounting ang pera ng business or lahat ng pag-aari ng business is separate sa pag-aari ng mga owners or ng mga stockholders if it's a corporation okay what does this mean okay ang ibig sabihin nito okay halimbawa merong uh, gastos, merong expenses si owner, hindi pwedeng ihalo niya ito sa expenses ng business niya okay, or ng corporation. Okay? Kasi dapat separate sila. Okay? Kung kumikita pa yung kumikita ba talaga yung business? Kasi kung lahat na ang mga person halo nila sa business it may it might look like na naglo-loss yung business but if you look at it kumikita pala siya kasi majority ng expenses niya personal pala so it might lead to a wrong decision na okay let's shut down the business kasi hindi pala tayo kumikita eh yung mga personal na expenses ni ni may are hindi naman yung titigil kahit magsara yung business okay so we have this entity concept na where in the business is separate from the owner. So even for tax purposes, okay? Kasi one of the basic requirements for our expense to be deductible, it should be related to the business, okay? So that's the basic and first uh, concept of accounting. And then we have the accounting period. So sa Philippines, mostly, ang basic accounting period natin is one year. 
Okay, this is the filing of annual ITR. Okay, we're in lahat ng naging operations or results ng operation ng business, ipagsasama-sama niya within one year. Okay. So, this is very basic kasi we need to be able to measure okay, the businesses and kailangan pare-parehas yung period of measurement nila. So, usually we do it one year at least on a requirement of the financial statements. Pero internally, okay, businesses can do it more often. Pwedeng quarterly, monthly, okay, based on the need of the uh, business. Okay. As often as monthly, pwede siya kasi as I mentioned earlier, managers need to have the numbers to do the right or to come up with the right decision. Okay. And then we have here the accrual basis. Okay. Dalawa yung basis of accounting natin. Okay. We have the cash basis. Cash basis is very basic. Pag may lumabas na pera, Ibig sabihin, may expense tayo. Pag may pumasok na pera from customer or may nabenta tayo, ibig sabihin, meron na tayong sales. Okay. But for accrual basis, which is the acceptable basis in terms of accounting, it's different. Okay. On the basic term, let's just say, kapag nagbenta ka, let's say, nagbebenta ka ng t-shirt, kapag na-deliver mo to sa customer mo, meron ka ng income whether bayad or hindi. Okay? Well, the basic concept of this is tin-transfer mo na yung ownership. Okay? Nung item. Ibig sabihin, may utang na sa'yo yung customer. Okay? So that's the basic difference from a cash basis and an accrual basis. Okay? So let's go forward to the accounting equation. Counting equation, um, it all uh, goes around asset, okay, assets is equals to liabilities and owner's equity. So the assets, ito yung lahat ng pag-aari ng businesses. Okay? Nandyan yung pera, kung may pautang ka, yung mga properties and equipments mo, if you have a building, if you have a warehouse, kung may lupa ka, okay, all of these assets ito. But assets, okay, sino ba yung may-ari ng assets? Lahat ba ito pag-aari ito ng business? Well, technically speaking, we might say yes. Kasi cash mo yan, pautang mo yan for the receivables, for the property and equipment, sa yung nakapangalan ng mga titulo. Okay, even yung mga sasakyan, pwedeng nasa yung nakapangalan yung mga ORCR. But if you break it down, okay, in a simple term, remember, may Possible, okay, most of the time, ang business meron utang, right? And meron din, syempre, contribution yung mga may-ari or stockholders. Okay. So the, um, the source of funds of the businesses are coming from two items. Either utang or contribution ng mga stockholders or ng mga may-ari. That's why ganito yung equation natin. Okay, that's the reason behind of the equation of assets equals to liability plus owner's equity. Okay, in simple term, ang lahat ng assets ng business hindi big sabihin pag-aari yan ng mga stockholders. Okay, or na even ng sole proprietor. Kasi kung may utang ka, ibig sabihin yung mga lenders mo, okay, or mga suppliers mo, part of your assets are owned by them. Okay? That's why it's assets equals to liabilities plus owner's equity. This equation is very important for the accountants. Okay? Most of the time, lagi natin naririnig, kailangan balance. Okay? Should always be balance when we do the accounting. Ito yung reason kung bakit sinasabi nilang balance. Okay? We should always maintain uh, this equation. Okay? Double entry accounting, okay? Double entry accounting is a principle, okay, in accounting wherein every time na you have a transaction, lagi siyang meron dalawang impact. Okay, hindi pwedeng isang impact lang, laging dalawa. 
Kasi it's the reason on how we can be able to maintain this equation. Asset equals to liabilities plus owner's equity. Okay. We have the debit and credits. Okay. So I'll not discuss in detail yung debit and credits because it's very uh, technical. And, and we, have, we will have a next session wherein we will dig deeper on the debits and credits. But basically, debit and credit, this represents uh, the entries that we'll be doing in the accounting books equals to liabilities plus equity. Okay. Next is the accounting cycle. Okay. Accounting cycle, um, basically this is the process wherein a transaction is done, probably nagbenta ka, okay, to your customer, up to the report na mapunta ito sa financial statements. Okay? The financial statements, which are your final reports, okay, kasi merong process pa yan na dadaanan. Hindi naman simple na nagbenta ka, okay, let's say meron kang sales, diretso meron ka ng uh, revenue sa income statements. For example, you have like, Five transactions a day, okay. So sa three thousand, so three hundred sixty-five days, that will be how many, okay? mga one five, one six, one thousand six hundred transaction in a whole year. So how we come up on summarizing those, recording those, okay? Properly classifying those, that is the full uh, accounting cycle, okay? And this cycle is repeated in the same manner every period okay and this is basically on a one year kasi sabi natin accounting period usually is one year here in the philippines okay so this um ano magbibigay tayo ng mga common types of accounting transactions and how they will be treated in accounting okay I think this one is the very first transaction that will be coming up when you put up a business. Okay? Kasi kailangan natin ng contribution from the owners. Okay? Or we have the owner's equity. When you start a business, of course, you need to contribute something to the business. Pwedeng pera. Okay? Pwedeng properties. Okay? Not necessarily cash. Okay? That's the misconception. Pwedeng nag-contribute ka ng lupa or ng building or equipments that will be used for the business. So what will be the accounting entry here? Okay, first, there will be an increase in asset. Okay, as you can see on the last line, ito yung kinontribute ng owners. Pwedeng cash, okay, pwedeng properties, pwedeng equipments, but mostly they will be uh, assets. Okay, so that is the debit. And then the second entry, okay, kasi as we've mentioned, kailangan lagi tayong dual entry at a minimum. Okay? So if we increase the asset on the other direction of the equation, we need to increase the equity. Okay? Di ba sabi natin yung asset, it in composed of two items, whether pag-aari ng owners or pag-aari ng mga pinagkakautangan natin. But since this, the nature of this uh, transaction is a contribution from the owners, of course, equity should be the right entry here. Okay? So we are increasing the equity. Okay? And, okay, and the equation is still equal. We increase the assets and then we also increase the equity. Next one, we have a liability tra transaction. Okay, sabi natin, nag-contribute si owner. However, hindi ito enough, okay, to really run the business. Sabi natin, we have two types of uh, funds where we can get, okay, to run the business. Other than equity, pwede tayong mag-utang. And most of the time, lenders, okay, or banks, sila yung nalalapitan natin dito. Again, kung nang-utang tayo, most likely it is a cash, it will be part of the assets. And if we increase the assets, okay, we will also increase the liabilities kasi nadagdagan yung utang natin. Okay, or nagka-utang tayo. If this is an initial um, debt, 
Okay? Again, we maintain the formula. Okay? Asset equals to equity plus liabilities. Equal pa rin siya. We increase the asset, we increase the liabilities. Okay, another equity transaction, I think this will be the same. Okay. Okay, another one is for the asset transaction. Okay, let's say meron ka ng enough fund, nag-contribute na si owners, nakapangutang na tayo, we have a cash. Kailangan natin bumili ng equipment. Okay? So bumili tayo ng equipment. So we have an entry here, we have an increase in uh, asset kasi we have an increase in the value of our equipments. Nagkaroon tayo ng let's say nagbumili tayo ng makina. Okay? Pero ano ba yung ginamit natin para bilhin na mak yung makina na yon? Siyempre hindi naman na ibibigay ng libre yon, okay, ng supplier. Okay? So kailangan natin bayaran yon using cash. Okay? for a sample on this transaction. So we give cash, we receive equipment. So the two entries here are increasing asset for the equipment that we receive, but we also decrease an asset, okay, which is cash. So ang gumalaw lang dito is yung left side, which is the asset. Okay? So if you look at the equation, still it's equal. Basically, walang gumalaw in the asset, but the items within the assets, okay, merong mga movement. Okay? So we are looking here only on a high level for you to understand on how these transactions um, impact the equation that we are using. Next item is for the drawing transactions. Okay, let's say at the end of the year, okay, after one year of operations, kumita yung business natin. And then the sole proprietor decided to, I want to get some money okay, from the business. I think I deserve it okay, kasi nag-contribute ako dyan. So basically, he can ask for cash okay, as a proprietor. So when we give up cash, okay, when we give it to the owner, as we mentioned again, the owner is different from the business. You can see here, okay? Pinabalikan na natin yung basic principle na yun. Okay? Kasi kapag hindi mo sila pinaghiwalay, kahit kumuha ng pera yung may-ari sa business, huwag na tayo mag-entry kasi sa kanya naman business yan. Okay? That is wrong. Okay? Even if the business belongs to him, okay? kahit siya pa yung ano, owner, sole owner, sole proprietor ng business, need to account it. Kapag kumuha siya ng pera doon, Okay, we need to remove the cash from the business. Okay, so that means yung pera na yun, wala na yun sa business. Lumipat na yun ng bakod, pumunta na yun sa may-ari. Okay, kung nawalan ng cash, okay, sa business, yung kasunod nun, for the other item on our transaction, we have to decrease the equity. Kasi nabawasan na yung contribution ng may-ari sa business kasi kumuha siya okay, ng pera as a withdrawal. So we will decrease the asset and we will also decrease the equity from that transaction. Again, the equation is still equal. Assets is equals to equity plus liabilities. Okay? Accrued income or receivable transaction. So this one naman is uh, we'll have a sample to prove the accrual basis, one of the basic entity concept. Okay? Let's say a uh, business entity renders a service or uh, sells good but have not received payment. Let's get back on the example natin na kunwari nagbebenta ka ng t-shirt and then yung t-shirt binigay mo na sa customer pero hindi pa siya nagbabayad. Okay? Here, Basically, we have an increase in asset which is an accounts receivable or yung pautang natin. Okay? Meron tayong pautang kasi kailangan niyang bayaran yung amount or yung cost ng t-shirt na dineliver natin. And then we have a credit sales. Sales or ito na yung benta natin. Sales, okay, 
if you look at it, wala siya dun sa assets equals to equity plus liabilities. Okay? Pero, sales basically goes to the equity. Kasi all of the transactions of the business in relation to the sales, expenses, lahat yun sa may-ari. Okay? Those are on the equity side. It, uh, it impacts okay, the performance of the business going to the owners. Kasi yung sa liabilities, ang may kinalaman lang dyan, yung sa principal ng inutang mo, yung interest ng inutang mo, okay, kapag binabayaran mo yung mga yun. Pero if it has something to do with the sales and the expenses, basic expenses of the business, sila ay related dun sa equity okay, or dun sa side ng may-ari. That's why here we have an increase in asset, which is the receivable or yung pautang, and then we also have increase in equity. Okay, so para na dagdagan yung pag-aare, okay, ng mga stock ng stockholder or ng proprietor, kasi nakabenta yung business. Okay, that's the reason behind. So within that, the formula still maintains. Okay, its equation: asset equals to equity plus levy. How about the collection of uh, receivables? Yung kaninang pinautang natin. Let's say ngayon nagbayad na siya. Okay. So this one, ang entry natin, we have a debit cash. Okay. Kasi we already received the cash. Nagbayad na yung may utang natin. Pero mababawasan din yung asset natin which is the receivable or yung pautang. Okay. Okay. Again, dalawang entry pa rin tayo. We have the cash and then we have the receivable which will be decreased kasi mawawala na yung utang ng customer. Okay? Again, we are maintaining the equation. In the asset, walang gumalaw, basically, kasi nadagdagan lang yung cash natin at nabawasan yung pautang natin. And then, equals to equity plus liabilities which, is, which has no movement okay, on the right side of the equation. Next one is for the accrual of expense. Okay. Here, let's say, um, bill ng kuryente. Okay. Let's say yung bill ng kuryente natin for the month of July. So usually yung bill ng kuryente, okay, let's say July 1 to July 31, hindi mo naman yan marireceive ng July 31. Mostly, marireceive mo yan August first week, August 5 or August 10. Okay? Pero, if you are doing a monthly reporting, yung expense mo yun, which is the uh, expense for your uh, utilities, yung kuryente mo, sa July mo yun na-incur kasi July mo yun ginamit. Okay? Hindi naman sa August. Kahit na-receive mo yung bill ng August, if yung period ng bill is from July 1 to 31, kailangan mong i-record yung bill ng kuryente sa July. Okay? Pero hindi mo pa siya binabayaran. Kasi August pa darating yung bill and most likely meron pang due date yan. Pwedeng August 20 pa okay, or August 25. But you won't record that expense in August. You should record that in July. Okay? That is the requirement of the accrual entity concept kailangan mong i-record yung expense mo kung kailan mo siya ginamit. Okay. So for here, yung entry natin, we have a debit expense. Okay. And that debit expense goes to the equity. Same thing kanina, di ba, sa sales natin. We say, sa equity siya pupunta, mag increase kasi nakabenta. So, parti yun ng mga may-ari. Pero ito, dahil expense siya, parti ito ng may-ari, pero mababawasan sa share ng may-ari. So we have here a decrease in the equity. Okay? And then the another entry is another entry is the increase in liability. So nadagdagan naman yung utang mo dito. Okay? So July 31 pa lang, meron ka ng utang kahit wala pa yung bill mo. Yun yung sinasabi ni accounting. Hindi ka magkakautang sa August 5 kung kailan mo marireceive yung bill. July 31 pa lang, mayroon ka ng utang kasi nagamit mo na 
yung kuryente na yon from July 1 to 31. Okay? So we have an entry, we have the expense, and then we have the liability or accounts payable. Okay? Again, dual entry. Okay? So we have the equity decrease and then liability increase. So it will balance the equation okay, on the right side. So again, we are still maintaining the equation. Asset equals to liability plus equity. Okay? So when the business, let's say, dumating na yung due date, let's say August 20, magbabayad na ng kuryente yung business natin. So pag nagbayad ng kuryente, again, we have two entries. The obvious one here, magbabayad ka ng cash, right? Kasi you need to settle yung utang mo. So we have a decrease in assets. And then on the other side, remember, meron kang utang. So mababawasan na yung utang mo na yun, which is the liabilities. So we decrease the asset, and then we decrease the liabilities. Again, the equation is still maintained. Okay, asset is still equals to equity plus liabilities. So you get the point on, on those transactions. Okay, if you look at them, it's very simple, right? Pero imagine thousands of those transactions, okay, especially for big companies, thousands on a daily basis. So lahat ng yan, paano mo yan pagsasama-samahin? Okay, so we have here the books of accounts. Books of accounts are actually legally uh, required. Once na mag-register ka sa BIR, mandatory, kailangan mo rin mag-register ng mga libro mo. Okay, and this is the requirement of Section 232 of the National Internal Revenue Code. Okay, kasi ito yung basis ng mga PIR kapag nag-review sila kung saan ka nagre-record. Okay, where there are different ways on how you can record. Pwedeng manual yung mga libro or you can do the loose leaf. Loose leaf is in a way na yung Excel file, you can have it printed at the end of the year. But you need to get a consent or approval from the BIR. Okay? Hindi pwedeng basta ka nalang gumamit ng ganon. Okay? And then we also have here the computerized accounting systems or the CAS. For the CAS and, uh, and the loose leaf, you need to get an approval from the BIR to use this. Kapag wala ka nun, you need to use yung manual. Basically, you need to write okay, as in handwritten for these books. So these types of books, okay, meron tayong cash resist journal, cash disbursements journal, general journal, purchase journal, and sales journal. For cash resist journal and cash disbursements journal, so th these are very obvious based on their names. So every cash transactions, kapag pumapasok ang cash, sa cash receipts natin nire-record. Okay? Kapag lumalabas ang cash, sa cash disbursements. For the purchase journal, kapag meron tayong binili, okay, and inutang natin to, hindi pa natin siya binayaran agad, dito siya nire-record. For sales journal naman, kapag meron tayong mga benta, okay, na pautang, dito rin sila pupunta, sales journal. And everything else na hindi nagpo-fall sa cash receipts, cash disbursement, purchase, purchase journal, sales journal, sa general journal naman sila pupunta. Okay? So general journal is our last resort. Ano ba yung mga examples of transactions na hindi fit dun sa apat? Let's say the depreciation of your equipment. Okay? Kasi time and time, over the years, kapag ginagamit mong equipment, nababawasan yung value niyan. Hindi pwedeng binili mo ng 2015 yung sasakyan mo at the amount of 1 million. Pagdating ng 2020, 1 million pa rin yan. Okay? Of course not. There's the wear and tear. Okay? Or even yung as time goes by, syempre, nababawasan yung value. So we have here yung tinatawag nilang depreciation. Okay, so we debit the depreciation, credit accumulated depreciation. So wala tong cash receipts, wala tong cash disbursement, hindi mo to binili kasi nasa yun na, hindi rin siya sales. So yung recording niya mapupunta sa general journal. Okay, so these are the types of accounting books that you will need to do your recording. Okay, 
And these are mandatory requirements of the BIR. Okay, next is the book of final entry or yung mga ledgers natin. Dito rin natin ginagawa yung tinatawag nilang trial balance. Okay, wherein we will summarize all of the transactions na nirecord natin dito sa cash receipts, cash disbursement, general journal, purchase, and the sales journal. So this uh, uh, ledger, we will summarize all those entries para makabuo tayo ng financial statements. All right. So what are the basic financial statements? At a minimum, okay, kapag mandatory ka mag-submit ng financial statements sa BIR and SEC, you need to have the balance sheet, okay, or what we now call statements of financial position, the income statements or the statements of profit and loss, statement of cash flows, and the statement of retained earnings. So balance sheet, ito yung pinapakita natin kanina sa inyo na asset equals to liabilities and equity. So dito nakarecord lahat ng pag-aari ng company. Okay, dito rin nakalagay yung lahat ng utang ng company and lastly, yung sa equity side or the shares of the owners. Kaya siya tinatawag na statement of financial position. Kasi you will see the numbers or the balances okay, of the financial standing of the company of a specific, specific date. Usually December 31. Okay, you will see magkano ba yung pera ng kumpanya as of December 31. Magkano ba yung total asset niya? Magkano ba yung lahat ng pag-aari niya? Magkano ba yung utang okay, ng business as of December 31? Mas marami ba yung utang niya kaysa sa assets niya or sa pag-aari niya? So doon pa lang, you will already see if may problem ang business. Kasi kung mas marami yung utang ng business kaysa sa assets niya, meron siyang liquidity issue okay, or probably going concern. Going concern in a manner na baka hindi na siya mag-survive for the next few years. Okay? Kasi wala siyang enough na pambayad ng utang. So from that, you can already strategize. Kailangan ko bang magdagdag ng pera as an owner sa business para mag-survive siya? Or pwede ba akong mag-utang okay, sa mga banko para meron akong pagbayad, pambayad? Kasi kung hindi mo ito titignan or kung wala kang ganitong report, baka magulat ka na lang naniningil na pala lahat ng pinagkakautangan mo, suppliers mo, yung banko, and then tsaka mo lang na-realize kulang pala yung pera mo kapag wala ka ng ganitong report. Okay? That is one basic example on why these reports are very important. Next one is the income statement, okay, or profit or profit and loss. So dito mo makikita yung performance ng business. Usually, on a period, based on our accounting period, pwedeng one month, three months, or one year, which is the statutory requirement. So may kita mo dito, kumita, pa yung, kumita ba yung business within this one year? Magkano ba yung bottom, bottom line? Okay, which is usually kung anong tawag ng mga business owners. Top of the line, which is the revenue. Pwedeng sales, sale of goods, sale of service. Okay, may kita mo magkano ba yung kinita ng business. Okay, next item is the statement of cash flow. Saan ba napunta yung pera ng business? Or saan ba nanggagaling yung pera ng business? Okay, either way, you can check it on this statement. Yung pera bang pumapasok mostly galing sa operation dahil maraming nabebenta yung business? O baka naman yung mga pumapasok na pera, inuutang pala mostly. Or contribution sila galing sa mga may-ari. Okay, you need to assess that. And then, saan napupunta ang pera? Sa business operations ba? Okay. Or majority ba pinababayad natin ng utang? Okay. Or majority ba nagiging withdrawal ng may-ari? So you can see, okay, kung saan sila napupunta. Ang cash, it's only a one-line item okay, of the balance sheet or all of our assets, but it is very important. Sabi nga nila, cash is king. And it is very true on every business. Kaya meron pa siyang sariling statement, okay, just to see kung paano yung flow ng pera. Saan nanggagaling ang pera, okay, saan napupunta ang pera, for you to strategize. 
And then the last item is the statement of retained earnings. So statement of retained earnings, okay, this is the um, owner um, statement for the owners. So ito yung cumulative profit and loss. Okay, over the years, since nag-start yung business, magkano na ba yung kinita? Okay, ng business. And then magkano na rin ba yung binalik ng business sa mga may-ari? So that will be the amount. So obviously, if the retained earnings is positive, that means over the years, kumita yung business. Pero kapag ito naka-negative, ibig sabihin, loss yung business from nag-start sila. Okay, considering din, of course, yung mga binabalik natin sa may-ari, whether it is a dividend okay, or a withdrawal for sole proprietorship. Okay, I think that's it for the accounting. So we've discussed, okay, kung ano ba yung accounting um, from the start, paano ba siya nare-record, okay, hanggang ano yung final product. So these are the final product, which are the financial statements. So yung mga gumagamit nito, yung diniscuss natin, yung mga internal and external. So these uh, reports are very important, okay, for the users. Okay, so let's see if we have any questions. You can type your questions, okay, para makita natin. So this ano ah, this presentation, okay, basically is just an overview. Okay, that's why it's very high level. Okay, kasi we will have a discussion that is deeper, okay, and we'll discuss yung mga details natin, okay? And this will be made Okay, on August 19. Okay, that's why I understand if you're saying na advance siya. Kasi this is just an overview of the discussion. Okay, we have a question here. So what if a small business entity, mandatory po ba na complete yung books of accounts namin? Okay, so for small businesses, especially if you are a non-VAT company, non-VAT ibig sabihin hindi lalampas ng 3 million yung revenue nyo for whole year. Hindi nyo na kailangan ng purchase and sales journal. Kailangan nyo lang yung cash receipts, cash disbursement, the general journal, and then the ledgers. Okay? Ito naman yung i-require ni BIR kapag nag-register kayo. Okay? Ititignan naman nila if you are VAT or non-VAT. Okay? Pero meron pa rin kayo ng cash receipts, cash disbursement, general journal, and the ledger. And to come up with the financial statements. Okay. So next question. So if an owner contribute assets um, like car, do they need to transfer the ownership to the company and how? Yes, you need to if you are really going to contribute it. So this uh, this way, meron kang kailangan mga i-transfer uh, papers na gagawin. Para kang nagbebenta rin ng sasakyan, okay, you need to transfer the registration to the name of the company. Okay? Kailangan mong gumawa ng kontrata between you as an owner and the company. And you need to have this registered and updated sa LTO. Okay? Tsaka yung clearance for selling. Kasi yung mga sasakyan, nare-register din yan sa LGU. Okay? You also need to do that. Okay, any more questions? 
So this is only a preview discussion, okay, for our full uh, course in August on August 19, okay. So um, we will have the full uh, course of the accounting and bookkeeping, okay. We will have a detailed discussion on August 19. So I uh, recommend for you to register um, para maano natin to, madiscuss natin in details. Any amount po ba yung pwede i-donate? Can you elaborate on that, uh, Miss uh, Faith? Okay, we have question here. Sa income statement po ba, need ba magtali sa fina-file na ITR sa BIR? Um, when you say magtali, hindi naman ibig sabihin equal sila. But you need to have a reconciliation. Okay? Most of the time, hindi magpaparehas ang income statement sa FS at saka sa ITR. Okay? Pero merong reason kung bakit hindi sila parehas dapat. Kasi... Merong mga non-deductible expenses, okay, non-taxable income. Okay? So yun, magkakaroon na ng mga difference. Okay? But you need to have a reconciliation para malaman ano ba yung difference ng income statement sa ITR okay, and income statement sa financial statements. Okay? Okay, I think that's it. If we don't have any questions anymore. Okay, ito. We have a last question here. Uh, meron po kami BPO services for our accounting and advice po sa amin is hindi na kami need ng cash receipts book. If you are registered with the BIR, it's a mandatory requirement at a minimum yung cash receipts. Kasi the question is, sa nyo ire-record yung revenue ninyo or yung mga collections ninyo. Okay? And sa cash receipts lang sila pupunta. Kasi if you are a non-VAT, wala kang sales journal. Okay? So mare-record mo lang yung mga cash receipts mo from your sales sa cash receipts box. Okay? So that's it. So thank you very much, guys. I hope to see you on uh, August 19. Okay, for the full uh, 